Welcome to anxiety part four, stress. So why am I talking about stress? What's this got to do with mental illness? Well, too much stress on the body, a prolonged amount of stress on the body can actually help you to develop mental illness, especially illnesses such as generalised anxiety disorder. I also am talking about it because we are living in a very stressful time, we are living in a very busy time, we've got a lot of jobs, responsibilities, work commitments, school, family, relationships, da 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 All of this adds up and can make us feel stressed and too much stress can have physical effects on the body and I'm going to go through those today and talk about all the physical effects because you don't just have to have mental illness to experience stress but stress can bring on mental illness and I want to help people to prevent these things happening but we really need to be thinking about what is causing our stresses why are we getting so stressed can we can we take any of those stresses away can we make sure that we set aside time to relax to do some breathing to do some fun leisure activities that don't involve our mind and body being in this stressful place so i'm going to go through all of that today i'm not going to talk about the fight or flight or anything like that please check out the fight or flight video because it does explain a lot of what um, happens within this stress system stress response there are seven parts of the seven systems within the body that the stress affects so this is pretty serious stuff i'm really can't stress this enough that we need to be talking about stress and starting to put some things in place that we are not getting to this level of stress all the time because it can make us sick can even cause us to have heart problems and things like that so we need to be talking about it you need to be thinking about what's making you stressed and how we can take down stress levels in your life today's information is taken from stress.org and the american psychological association that information is in the description below seven systems i'm going to list them now so we've got the nervous system the mus nervous system muscular skeletal system i think i'm saying that correctly respiratory system cardiovascular system endocrine i think e-n-d-o-c-r-i-n-e endocrine system number six is the gastrointestinal system and number seven the reproductive system so all of these when we're going through that fight or flight that the um, releasing of those stress hormones all of these things happen and I, i will stress it again prolonged effects of stress on the body makes us ill and then we get more stress because we're ill so we need to slow it down guys don't we let's talk about it right um, when stressed physically or psychologically the body suddenly shifts its energy resources to fighting off the perceived threat threat not fled in what is known as the fight flight or freeze response the sympathetic nervous system signals the adrenal glands to release adrenaline and cortisol these hormones make the heart beat faster raise blood pressure change the digestive process and boost glucose levels in the bloodstream once crisis passes bodily systems usually refer back to normal return back to normal however (coughs) if you are suffering from um, generalized anxiety disorder or someone like me with bpd you're going to be in that fight or flight state a lot of the time and it's a continued state at this place that makes us ill if we're quite happy we get a bit stressed and then we come back down that's fine but if we're constantly staying in that place we might not realize we're there but there's a lot of stuff that can happen so I'm not trying to stress you out, I'm just trying to, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm a bit all over the place today, so bear with, hopefully we'll get there. Um, so too much exposure to stress can release the cortisol. Cortisol and adrenaline, too much of this can suppress the immune system, okay? It suppresses the immune system, so it can make us sick, it can make us run down, it make us more likely to pick up bugs and other colds and things like that which will then probably make us more stressed if we then have to manage our school or our work in order to, you know, sorry, make us more stressed because we won't be able to go to work or school because we're stressed and because we're ill and it just keeps going round. So in, um, it also causes an increase in blood pressure. We don't want high blood pressure. High blood pressure can lead to all sorts of things. We also don't want high blood sugar levels and, and that is another thing that can happen. Also, if you're in the nervous system, when this is affected by the stress, if your body doesn't return back, that normal place if it stays at this crisis level 
You can also have a decrease in libido, you can have bad skin, it can produce acne, and it can go on to contribute to obesity. I know that um, too much cortisol can make you put, put weight on around the tummy. So that is the nervous system. Too much stuff is going on and we uh, too much exposure to stress can it suppress the immune system, increase the blood sugar levels, blood pressure, and can lead to obesity. So not so good on the immune system. Second, the muscular skeletal system. Under stress, muscles tense up. The, the con contraction of muscles for extended periods can trigger tension headaches, migraines, um, chronic pain, so other illnesses, um, other conditions that involve chronic pain. Also, um, something that I've added here, which is brux bruxism, which is teeth grinding and teeth clenching. So if you're tensed up a lot, I do this a lot when I'm stressed, sometimes when I'm driving, shoulders shoot up. Um, and this has actually led to me developing fibro. Um, I've got loads of knots in my back, all the way down my spine. There, I think there are eight or nine points. I have most of them. And this is from years of <coughs> stress, 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 stress. So do it now. Maybe your shoulders are up. Can you feel them <sighs> go down? I will be talking about how to manage stress at another time, but so you can feel it. I also now have to wear a mouth guard because I grind my teeth so much that I've actually worn down some of the teeth on my bottom row. And you have to wear a, night guard, a mouth guard at night now. And sometimes I put it on in the evening because I tend to get more grinding teeth in the evening for some reason. So yeah, that can really have an effect. You know, if you're constantly tensing your muscles up, it's gonna have an effect, a physical effect on your body. So try and get those shoulders down. Respiratory system, respiratory system. Stress can make you breathe harder and cause rapid breathing or hyperventilating. So <laughs> this can bring on panic attacks. Please check out my panic attack video. But if you already have breathing problems, it's gonna make things worse. If you've already got asthma or some sort of bronchial um, you know, illness, then when you're having a panic attack, it's gonna make you, so when you're having this rapid breathing, the respiratory system, you're not getting enough oxygen in. So this could make you this can make you feel very very scared very very um, poorly and it could even make you think you're having a heart attack. So breathing and the mus and the respiratory system, constant staying at this prolonged state of stress can make it. You know you can even bring on an asthma attack even if you're not asthmatic. So if you have issues with your chest and breathing anyway, it could be made worse when you're stressed. The cardiovascular system, acute stress. Um, that can cause an increased rate and stronger contractions in the muscles. So the blood vessels that um, direct blood to the large muscles and to the heart dilate, increasing the amount of blood pumped to these parts of the body. So everything's pumping around faster in your cardiovascular system. Repeated episodes of acute stress can cause inflammation in the coronary arteries that can lead to a heart attack. So. I think uh, we think about a lot of people with the, you know, um, p people who are stressed that this could lead to heart attacks. And this is 100% true. It can also lead to hy hypertension and even stroke. So if you're constantly elevated at this stress level for long periods of time, it can bring on physical illnesses such as hypertension and heart attack or even a stroke. So again, we need to get those levels down, guys. We need to chill. We need to... We'll talk about that, how to do it another time. Okay, number five, and please do apologize if I get this wrong, the endocrine system, E-N-D-O-C-R-I-N-E. -E. So this, this is your adrenal glands and your liver. So when the body is stressed, the brain sends signals from the hypothalamus causing the adrenal cortex to produce cortisol and, a, and the adrenal mel medulla to produce epinephrine, sometimes called the stress hormone. So I've, I've talked about that in um, one of my previous anxiety videos. And, okay, now we're talking about the liver. So when the cortisol and epinephrine are released, the liver produces more glucose, a blood sugar that will give you more energy to fight the flight or fight in an emergency. So those 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 glands, those they are released, the, the hormones are released. And again, if you're staying at this level all the time with the increased blood sugar, blood glucose, you could be vulnerable to type 2 diabetes. So it's not just overweight. If you're too stressed and it has effects, on your endocrine system, your adrenal glands or your liver, you could develop type two diabetes. So I'm not trying to do this to like scare you or fear you, like, you know, like the media, fear, let's 
use fear to control everybody. I'm just saying this is what I've researched and I want to pass this information on to you because we need to be chilling out. Okay, number six, the gastrointestinal system. So we're talking about the esophagus, the stomach and the bowels. Nice. So the esophagus, stress may prompt you to... Spec Let's start that again. Stress may prompt you to eat much more or much less than you usually do. Some people, I've said this before, when you get stressed, so much adrenaline makes you not want to eat. But on the other hand, sometimes people get stressed and all they want to do is eat. You know which one you are. Um, if you eat more or different foods or increase your use of tobacco, that's stress. This is awful today. We're going to get there. We are. We are. If you eat more or different foods or increase your use of tobacco and alcohol, you may experience heartburn and acid reflux. So stress on the esophagus, you could get heartburn and acid reflux in your stomach. You may get that feeling of butterflies um, or even a bit of nausea and pain. I know for me, when I've got very, very stressed and had like, you know, six or seven hours of crying at that fight or flight level, later on in the evening or in the night I probably will vomit and I have vomited many times after being severely stressed um, and, but you can also develop ulcers so people talk about stomach ulcers and things like that that can happen if you're constantly keeping your gastrointestinal system in this fight or flight fight or flight sorry bowel stress can affect digestion um, so it means that your nutrients might not be absorbed um, and it also affects how quality of the quality how how the quality oh my god how quickly the food moves through your body and the quality of its movement so you could then develop diarrhea constipation ibs if you're not if you're staying at this level and uh, not coming down from this level and constantly staying there it can have an effect on your esophagus your stomach and your bowels me myself i have ibs and i know that uh yeah when i'm more stressed i get diarrhea when i'm really depressed i get constipation so Again, I probably shared that with you before. Very too much information. Finally, the reproductive system is affected. So in men, hello chaps, um, one for you. Excess amounts of cortisol produced under stress can affect normal malfunctioning of the reproductive system. Chronic stress can impair testosterone, sperm production, and can even cause impotence. Okay, chaps? So we want to get those levels down. And then for women... Um, this can, uh, the too much stress can um, completely mess up your cycle, completely make you miss, um, have absent or irregular periods, more painful periods, and for both men and women, it can reduce sexual desire, sexual libido. So there's a lot of things that can happen when we are stressed, and like I say, I can't stress this enough. We need to be taking care of ourselves, we need to be having a lot less stress in our lives and a lot less stress on the body i'll be talking more about how to cope with this stress at a later date but thank you for watching please put any comments or questions you have in the space below let me know have you developed anything because of uh, con continued anxiety do are you at that fight or flight level what happens to you um have you had experience of any of the any of the illnesses i've talked about have you got hypertension have you do you have tension migrates do you have bruxism bruxism do you have have you developed type 2 diabetes whatever you want to tell me whatever your story please put it in the space below i'll do my best to comment where possible um please like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you next time thanks guys